Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper, along with Tony Hager. Hollywood Wayne Boyd will be along the way shortly. This is Global Wrestling News. Our show this week starts in Iowa City. That's where the women's national team is training for the Rio Trials and Olympic qualifying event in Frisco, Texas. The camp includes the first three ranked wrestlers at every weight, along with athletes from Canada, Finland, Latvia, and Estonia. Prior to the Iowa-Purdue duel, a special wrestle-off will be held to fill the four remaining spots on the women's Pan American team that will see action March 4th. USA Wrestling's Gary Abbott caught up with Terry Steiner, Tom Brands, and a couple of the women who will be gunning for gold in 2016. You know, for the girls, we have a lot of reasons to be back here. I mean, obviously, I want them to be comfortable with this arena, with this place before the Olympic trials, so when they come in here, they're not so wide-eyed and and uh, they can get down to business right away, so that's number one. Um, number two, it's a great training venue. I mean, you, you have Carver Hawkeye, you have the stairs and things out there. You have this wrestling room that just, uh, there's a standard in here, right? There's a standard of excellence, there's a standard of intensity and purpose, and I want them to see that and be around it and feel it. You know, Steiner's a Hawkeye, and so the tradition isn't lost on him and his experiences. He remembers them well, so, uh, you know, add the fact that in April there's the Olympic trials here and it makes a good case for them to come here and train. You know, the World Championships being in Las Vegas this year with the results they had in the last match uh, where, you know, Lee Jane's provisor had to win a bronze medal to put the women in the top three as a team, which means that as a team you're the bronze medalist, which is a big deal in international competition. Uh, that was a, a big step and it was pretty exciting and I was there and saw it. Uh, two world champs, too, uh, Morales and Gray. So I think you take the natural steps where it becomes exciting. There's conversation. Uh, you keep chipping away. There's, you know, what is it now? Maybe just under two dozen, maybe, is, comes to mind, where there's college programs, women's college programs. As far as Division One, I, I think you're probably a ways away. But, you know, keep doing what you're doing, and good things will happen. It's actually a big dream come true for me. It's my favorite program in the whole world, so very happy to be here training. I was actually really jealous that the team got to come in 2012 when I wasn't wrestling, so to be here now, I'm just really happy about it. I remember four years ago, you know, even still today, people are like, women's wrestling, you know, unheard of, you know, scratched their head, like, I didn't know women wrestled, you know, and it was pretty cool, like, you know, say four years ago, the next morning I went out to eat breakfast, and the Iowa City, the people of Iowa City just knew. They're like, oh, congratulations, I just saw you, you know, and whatnot. They pay attention to the athletics that's going on, wrestling in particular. Um, I think it's huge, you know, for women's wrestling as a sport to grow, you know, and it, you know, I, for me, I'm from Hawaii, so the sport's growing out there, and I get excited to be able to go back home and see all young girls from six years old through high school just get excited about the sport. So, I think it's a pretty cool concept. What do you think about combining the events? I'm 100% for it. We need to do more piggybacking on events, especially in Iowa. That's where the fans are at. Wouldn't we just talk about holding more events in the state of Iowa? I mean, this is where all the uh, tennis records are at. They, they keep setting them and setting them again. Iowa holds the uh, record for attendance year in, year out. I think they're on their ninth consecutive season of holding that record. So let's go where the fans are at. USA Wrestling is doing something right here. Yeah, they absolutely are. I'm glad they've figured it out, and perhaps looking at a different way to develop its fan base. How many more people will see this solely because it's at Carver? Well, like I said, there's around 8,300 people that uh, on average watch these 8, duels. 8,358. That's close. That's definitely close enough. That's a ton. I mean, over 8,000 people are going to be expected at uh, the Purdue duel. So to, to follow that up with women's wrestling, it, it's a great way to grow that, that fan base. Obviously, we can't hold every event in Iowa. What are some of the other schools that should look at this concept? Penn State has been picking it up where they've had their successes, so that's helped the attendance. They average around 7,700. So, uh, but I keep going back to this. I mean, maybe I'm being greedy because I'm here in Iowa, but you just got to look at where the people are going to these events. In Iowa alone, they have we have three Division One schools that are in the top 10 for attendance records. So, I mean, it's pretty simple. No secret, Iowans love their wrestling. I think it's great for women's wrestling, obviously. 
but it's not going to make any difference if we don't get these weights qualified. 75 kilos. Yeah, 75 kilograms is the only weight class that the women have qualified for the Olympics. You know, I think the, the goal first is to qualify for the trials in Iowa City. You know, 33 of them did that at the U.S. Uh, Senior Nationals. Dave Schultz are coming up, so women are going to be hungry to, to get uh, into that qualifier. That's pretty unusual. Should we be worried at this point? I mean, shouldn't we have more of the weight classes locked down? It, it is unusual. Um, in 2012, we qualified three of the four at the World Championships, but we, we got to remember that we moved from four to six, so there, there's a lot more different weight classes that the, the U.S. team has been trying to figure out. So uh, this wrestle-off on Friday is huge to try to figure out who's going to be going for those qualifiers at the Pan Ams. It absolutely is. I'll tell you what, fans, we got to take a quick time out. Let's take a look on the way at the UWW Big Move of the Week. Stick around. You're watching Global Wrestling News. All right, welcome back. Hanger, you're all over social media. What caught your eye this week? There was this, there's this video that just going viral from a, a, it's a comedian, but he's the dad of two twin boys. You just got to check out how this match ended between the two. How old are those kids? They, what, about five? They're seven years old, and it, it kind of makes you wonder what type of stuff, you know, Tom and Terry did behind the scenes. I mean, can I see that again, Brad? All right, the obvious question from me, where does this register on the sportsmanship scale? Well, pretty poor, but you know, they're brothers, so you can't imagine if it was a different opponent that he would do this. I mean, the dad posted the video, so I've gotta, gotta think that the dad, I don't wanna say is proud of it, but it's kind of more funny than a bad sportsmanship. Yeah, I know that there was an ESPN article that resurfaced. Talk about this. Yeah, this is, uh, I don't know how this happens, but somebody, put it on Facebook, put it on Twitter. An ESPN article from 2013 is going around and it, it's real frustrating that, uh, you know, cause you're getting text messages from people. What the, you know, we thought it was saved and now this ESPN article, credible source, but it was in 2013. 2013. So. <laughs> I don't even know what people are thinking, but obviously there's a lot of passion in this sport and people are wanting to be protective and proud at the same time, making announcements, whether or not they're accurate or not. Uh, at the, you know, this is wrestling. We gotta love it. It's the power of social media, right there. I mean, I, I want to say Joe Rogan maybe retweeted it or shared it. And so when somebody with that many followers does something, it's it's just gonna go viral. And just what it did for me is just really remind me of where we were at uh, three years ago, and, and really desperate need of some answers. And we got them. So we have to keep going forward and doing what we what we do is promoting the sport. Absolutely, gotta keep promoting it. Not, not necessarily shoving it down their throat, but keeping it out there for people. And, and I love everybody who was uh, following along with this because how many times did the ESPN logo get retweeted? A lot. Holy cow. <laughs> well, speaking of promoting the, the sport, uh, a guy that knows a thing or two about that is Tony Ramos. He joined Ross and I on a Potentially Dangerous podcast to discuss USA's trip to Yvonne Yarigan and promoting the sport and its athletes. You know, it's one of the toughest tournaments in the world, so we're excited to head back out there and to compete and to uh, you know, see where everything's at right now and what we need to prepare and do better for um, you know, March Pan Am Games and then April Olympic Trials. So it's, it's different everywhere you go. And I ran, those fans were, they're crazy. They love you, they, you know, they, they're cheering for you. They come up to you, they wanna take pictures, they wanna do this, they wanna do that. Um, it's kind of just like being back in Carver Hawkeye Arena because they appreciate you coming over there and taking the time and especially with, you know, the U.S. and Iran not getting along so well. They really appreciate what you're doing. Um, Russia, you know, it's one of those places where you're not sure if they really want you there. Um, you know, they're, they're going to try and screw you any way they can. They're going to try and, you know, make it as hard as they can on you. And, you know, that's why it's a good time or a good thing to go there is because you have to deal with all those adversities along with, you know, the competition and they got great competition there. So that's what we're getting prepared for and ready to do. Recently, you've 
join this uh, relationship with Compound, the Squad 8. How did this all come about, and what are your thoughts now that how it's been, what, four months, and this is really formed? Yeah, um, you know, I think it's coming, coming along really good. It's not that the senior athletes, you know, they don't want money for everything. Um, they want ways to help grow them and to help, you know, build their media or their presence or their following. And one of the big things was, you know, when people use or send out results on Twitter, you know, why not use the athlete's Twitter name instead of their name, you know, like Anthony Ramos, use my Twitter name versus so-and-so's Twitter name. And if someone wants to, you know, follow you from there, they can just click on it really easy. And that's an easy way to help grow. And then when you go to sponsors and talk to them, you know, that's when the money starts to come in. Hey, I got 20, 30,000 Twitter followers that I can reach with one post, um, things like that. And it's just helping build your brand, uh, helping build, you know, familiar, familiarity with the athlete, the wrestlers, with the fans. Because now they can follow them through these social medias and not have to look them up and see if they have one. Um, thing, you know, just little things like that. Special thanks to Ross Bartacek and all the guys at IARussell.com. All right, coming up, it's As I See It with Wayne Boyd. Stick around. You're watching Global Wrestling News. All right, welcome back. Earlier today, I had a chance to catch up with Hollywood Wayne Boyd. Wayne, how are you? You know, I got a standard answer for that. If I got any better, I'd have to be two people. Over your left shoulder is a beautiful trophy. Can you tell us what that trophy is, Wayne, and hold it up perhaps for the camera? Yeah, I think I can get it in here. How's that? Beautiful. Look at that, huh? Now, is that the first year or the second year? This is the first year. Andy Barth has the other one at his house. Uh, we've been two years in a row. We're excited about uh, beating Iran. So we're going again next year. They've moved the date to December. And we're going to take a world-class team over there because we're going to be done with the Olympics. And I'm telling you, from 2016 to 2020, we're going to make a run at the world like no other country ever has. We're going to, we're going to make people think that we are Russian because we are starting to develop guys that are so good. I don't know what, I, you know, it's something It's just become our time. The young guys that are coming up, the guys that we've got to direct those young guys in terms of wrestling guys that aren't done. Is, is Burroughs going to go past 2016? Probably for another world title. Uh, if he wants to go for another Olympic title, me being his third, if he picks up 2016, it won't be easy for him. You just, you know, three Olympics, Bumgarner got, did it, but you saw that he wasn't as great in his last year. It's hard to be. Even the great Alexander Kareland couldn't get in uh, four. Four Olympics is the impossible dream. But if anybody can do it, Burroughs can do it. But we got guys like Martinez coming up. He's probably going to drop to 65 for this Olympic trials. But come 2016, he's going to be full-blown 74 kilos. And I really I really believe this kid's maybe one of the better wrestlers, not only in America, but in the world as a sophomore at the University of Illinois. He's got You're a big test. of course, about this. Isaiah Martinez. Yeah, I love this kid. I love the way he works. I love his work ethic. I love the way he likes to score points. And he's got a big test this weekend, Penn State. I don't know if they're at Penn State or Illinois, but there's a guy named, uh, I think it's Doff, who was a state champion two or three times, who's undefeated, red-shirted. Uh, and, you know, when you got Kale Sanderson and his staff in your corner, you got a chance to be the best you can be. What are your thoughts on an Olympic redshirt year for an athlete? Well, I, I think it depends on the individual. In this case, uh, it was a much harder choice for Kyle Schneider, having just won the world championships. Probably an easy choice for uh, uh, Tom Ryan. What does Tom Ryan want more than anything else? To repeat his team NCAA champions. He's got a chance to do that. It won't be it won't be as easy this year as it was last year for him. Uh, I think Iowa are going to push. Oklahoma State's going to push. And Penn State's back in the race. So, uh Schneider is the kind of kid that's got such a commitment to quality, to doing the right thing. He's not worried about himself. He's got great confidence. 
I think college season helps this particular wrestler. I think he's in better shape. I think it takes a little pressure off him in terms of international competition. And he's got a good month to get ready after the season for uh, Varner, who's not going to let go very easily. And then he's got a good uh, three months to prepare for the Olympic Games in August. So we're not going to have to worry about Kyle Snyder. He's certainly uh, one of Titan Mercury's best, and he's going to prove, I believe, over time, given he doesn't have some tragic injury, God forbid, he's going to prove that he's better, one of the better wrestlers uh, you know, that we've ever seen here in America. I mean, he's already on his way. So I'm excited about him being back at Ohio State. It shakes it up a little bit. Heavyweight, interesting. I mean, he's not really a heavyweight, but for him to be ready for the Olympic Games, he doesn't want to cut back down to 197. He wants to hang up there around 215, get up to about 230, come back down. You know, so probably he's probably weighing in right now at 230, 235, I'm guessing, and he'll be ready at 215 come the Olympic Games. And this has been another edition of As I See It, brought to you in part by our friends at Titan Mercury Wrestling Club and Under Armour. Wayne, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to be on with you guys. I can't wait until we have our own uh, NBC TV station. Let's think big. Let's keep growing. Keep up the good work, Scott. We need you in wrestling, stud. All right, stick around. We'll be back with a short timeout. This is Global Wrestling News. All right, it's time for Wrestling Quick Hit Saturday. We get to see a battle of unbeaten Illinois. Isaiah Martinez versus Jason Knopf is something we've been waiting for. Wayne talked a little bit about it. What do you think? I mean, these, te these two emerged last year on this scene at Midlands and the scuffle. Uh, ever since that tournament, it just kind of seems like we, we've been anticipating this potential matchup this year. We're going to get it Saturday. We're going to get it in a big way. Hey, there's a lot on the line Saturday. Kel Sanderson was the only wrestler to go undefeated. If you recall, that was his entire career. Martinez is on that path. Who are you, who are you picking in this battle? Uh, Penn State, they're going to Champaign, so Imar will be well-rested, no travel. Both these guys score a lot of points. I believe both of them only uh, you know, have two wins without bonus points this season. So uh, this is right, Blah, 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 blah. Get to it. All right, I'm, I'm picking Imar. Incredible defense. He's strong from his feet, not scared to take that shot. Just doesn't second-guess him, himself ever. And Boyd uh, obviously liked him as well. I think that's a trio. The first time in the history of this program, all three of us have agreed on anything. Well, USA Today, NWCA Division I coaches poll came out this week. No changes in the top five. You know, looking at these records, Penn State 10-0, Iowa 11-0, NC State 17-0, Mizzou 9-0, Okie State 6-2. I mean, I, I got to be thinking after watching all this football, I, I want to see some side of a bold championship. Like, top 10 would be invited to a, a duel, um, and, and you get major sponsorship. Kind of like a national Team, duels? A national duels, but it wouldn't, it's not promoted the way that the bowls are in football. So we got to find a way to make that a big deal. Bringing up, you're bringing up bowl games where half of the bowl games aren't making any money. Well, that's why we'd only do like the top 10. I mean, right now, if you go six and six, you get a bowl game. So Minnesota's 500. I think they're six and six. They would go to a bowl game. That that would not be the case. That those teams are would be out. Are you ready for our newest segment? Let's do it. Let's do Let's it indeed. It's called the Under Armour Athlete of the Week. Pretty self-explanatory. Every episode, someone will be honored for their achievement on the mat. Every winner is also going to get a Titan Mercury t-shirt from Under Armour. Who has the privilege of being the first ever Under Armour Athlete of the Week? Tommy Thorne with Minnesota Gophers. He upset number four, Anthony Ashnall, eight to one. Really domination for him from the feet on the mat. So Thorne, uh, you know, this is his biggest match of his career. I mean, he's like wrestling. 10th, right? Isn't he ranked 10th? He's ranked 10th, redshirt freshman, but I mean, this is his emergence into Minnesota Gophers and NCAA wrestling. If he doesn't win this, Minnesota drops below 500. So this right. is a big match for him and his team. Tony, you've talked enough. We're out of time. Our executive producer, Andrew F.R., thanks you for watching, as does our producer, Wayne Boyd, our partner in crime, Tony Hager. I'm Scott Casper. We appreciate you watching. Look for you next week right here on Global Wrestling News.